Here are five tips for gaining arena points in Season X. Presented by Fortnite Master. Also, make sure to stick around for a special message from our writer at the end of this video. For this video, we're going to break down five ways to level up your arena gameplay and gain points quickly. Fortnite's arena mode has been through a few changes this season, and if you're having trouble getting to the top, you're not the only one. We've identified some of the most important factors for gaining arena points, and we'll walk you through them step by step. The tips we're going to give you today won't turn you into an overnight arena legend, but if you put in the practice, you might just find yourself in champion division before you know it. Without wasting any more time, let's get started. Early game can be one of the hardest parts of arena matches. You don't know how many players will drop with you or what guns and items you'll find. This unpredictability can make it hard to survive for players who don't plan their landing carefully. One of the best ways to guarantee a safe early game is to land at the same drop spot consistently. This will give you an edge against other players who have less experience landing there. If you watch professional players like Booga, Benji Fishy, or Myth, you'll notice that when they play in tournaments, they try to land at the same drop spot every round. During week 3 of the Fortnite Championship Series tournament, Booga and his trio dropped at Paradise Palms every single round. Benji Fishy and his trio dropped at Retail Row, and Myth dropped at Lazy Lagoon with his trio. These high-level players consistently land at the same drop spots in tournaments because they know the advantages that come with learning and mastering their drop. Before you can learn a drop spot, you need to decide which POI will be the best choice for you. You might see Myth consistently succeed in his games where he lands at Lazy Lagoon, but that doesn't mean you will too. The best way to figure out if a drop spot is right for you is to determine whether or not it will fit your playstyle. For instance, drop spots on the edges of the map like Junk Junction and Frosty Flights are typically less contested than others. If you land at a less contested drop spot, it's unlikely you'll have to fight more than one player before rotating. On the contrary, drop spots closer to the middle of the map like Salty Springs and Tilted Town are typically more contested. If you land at one of these, you'll almost certainly have to spend a decent chunk of your early game fighting, which could result in easy kill points or wasted bus fare, depending on how well you play it. It's up to you to choose a spot that fits best with your playstyle and allows you to make it to mid game consistently. If you want an even more in-depth guide on this, check out our video on 9 tips for landing and surviving the early game. The link is in the description. After deciding which POI to land at, the next step is to figure out which building or structure in the POI is best. The ideal building should have a large amount of loot and provide some sort of advantage over other buildings, such as being taller or providing a good vantage point to see everything else in the area. There is a best building in every location, and if you analyze your drop spot thoroughly, you should be able to find it and give yourself an advantage over other players who may not take early game as seriously. For example, if you choose Lucky Landing as your main drop spot, the high rise in the southeast corner of the town would probably be most players' building choice. It's got a few chests, plenty of floor loot, and it's the tallest building in the town, which gives you free height over anybody else who lands with you. Having good loot combined with a high vantage point will put the odds on your side, just in case, dare I say it, you get caught in an early game fight. If you're going to get in an early game fight, you'll probably want to be the one who initiates it. Taking another player by surprise while they're looting can catch them off guard and make them panic if they don't have a decent loadout. For example, if you find a gold combat shotgun, which is one of the best weapons in the game, it's probably a good idea to push any nearby players while you still have such a large advantage. In this example, the odds of somebody finding a better gun than you in their first few loot spawns are pretty low. That said, if you're not comfortable with your mat count or health, you can always keep looting before you get in a fight. If you do decide to keep looting, you'll want to have a game plan in case somebody pushes you before you're ready. If you see or hear somebody approaching, it might be a good idea to sneak away to another building so you can keep looting. Unfortunately, this won't always be possible. If you're not finished looting and a player is aggressively pushing you, your best shot is to use the building's natural angles against the other player. Doorways, arches, and windows can all make great angles to hold, depending on where the other player is pushing you from. Whatever angle you're holding, make sure it's a right-hand peak. In a third-person shooter like Fortnite, right-hand peaks give you a huge advantage, especially if the other player runs into the angle you're holding. Don't tunnel vision on a single angle too long either, unless you're 100% certain that's where they're coming from. 
Sometimes, it's best to take another angle or just disengage completely so you don't waste too much of your looting and farming time. If you survive the early game fights in your drop spot, the only thing left to do before leaving is to finish looting and farming some mats. Don't worry about grabbing every single item in the area. Just focus on the base loadout and at least 500 total mats. When looting, it helps to know all of the chest spawns in your drop spot. You can find these in playground mode since chests will have 100% spawn rate. You want to be as efficient as possible with the path you take while looting. The quicker you can get loot, the more time you'll have to rotate, and the more likely you'll be able to get into a good position safely. Before rotating, do your best to efficiently farm materials as well. You need to figure out which objects in your POI are the most efficient for mats, aka what items give you the most materials in the shortest amount of time. In arena mode, a good rule of thumb is that you should be getting at least 7 mats per hit. If you're farming something that gives you less materials, you might want to look for a better alternative somewhere around your POI. For Lucky Landing specifically, the bamboo, cherry blossom, and regular trees, as well as the wooden furniture spread throughout the buildings are good sources of wood. For metal, you have the vehicles around town and the giant dumpling head, which gives you a lot more metal than you'd imagine. As for brick, you could farm the walls and floors of Lucky Landing's buildings, but they aren't very efficient. For a more efficient source of brick, you might consider making a pit stop on your rotation somewhere like the rock quarries and fatal fields, which leads us to our next point, rotation routes. Knowing your routes is another important tip that goes hand in hand with knowing your drop spot. Fortnite's moving storm mechanic forces you to move towards other players as the match progresses. It helps to have a few well-planned paths in mind where you can find mobility, loot, materials, and kill opportunities. No matter where you land, most games you will have to rotate into the circle. There is a rare exception when the circle lands on you multiple times in a row, in which case you might want to consider buying lottery tickets. Also, it would probably be a good idea to farm up and find a nice spot with high ground towards the center of the circle to camp in, but lottery tickets would be your first priority. Anyways, you need to have a route planned so that in the limited time you have to rotate, you can also find opportunities to loot, farm, and maybe even snag some kills. Having a solid route plan can be the difference between having mobility and mats to spare late game and dying because you have no way to rotate. Let's say you land Sunny Steps and the first storm circle is on the opposite corner of the map over Frosty Flights. You kill the only other player that landed at Sunny Steps and it's time to rotate, but your shotgun is less than ideal and you still need some wooden metal. You know there's a vending machine on the way to Pressure Plant, which also happens to have good sources of wood and metal, like wood pallets and metal fences. So, on your way to the circle, you head that way, picking up a better shotgun for yourself from the vending machine, then farming up some wood and metal at Pressure Plant. Now since you're already here, you can use the air vents in Pressure Plant to rotate somewhere like Loot Lake, where you could take the rift and go wherever you want. This is an example of a well-planned rotation route from Sunny Steps for a circle pulling southwest. What's great about routes like this one is that they allow us to get everything we need, like loot and materials, without wasting too much time straying from our rotation path. When planning your own routes, look at things like loot availability, efficient spots for farming materials, mobility, and even kill opportunities. This route we just described is great, but a single route isn't going to cut it. You should have multiple routes planned, in case a circle appears in a different direction. For instance, if the circle were to take place in the southeast corner of the map, over Paradise Palms, Loot Lake would be a little farther out of the circle. It might be a better idea to glide from Pressure Plant to Dusty Depot or Retail Row. It's important to think of a few alternative locations like this for your routes, in case the circle doesn't favor your main route. Having multiple options already lined up in your head will prevent you from cracking under pressure when your main loot route doesn't work out like you wanted. Of course, things might not always go as planned. Even with multiple routes in mind, you might encounter some complications along your journey to zone. For instance, all the materials might have already been farmed at Pressure Plant, or Loot Lake might look like a war zone that you don't want to get involved in. In situations like these, sometimes you have to alter the route you had planned and make a quick decision to reach your goal somewhere else. Let's say you were planning on farming wood pallets at Pressure Plant, but they're already gone. Instead, you could head to the forest just north of Retail Road to fill up on wood. This is a pretty simple example, but the idea is that for every rotation route, you should have multiple options planned just in case something doesn't work out. The key to progressing in Arena is striking the perfect balance between playing aggressive and defensive. When you encounter another player, you need to know whether it's best for you to stay away or fight them. 
If you make the wrong decision, it could result in you losing points for the round. Typically, you only want to fight somebody if you know for a fact that you have what we'll call a guaranteed advantage over them. There's not always a way to find out if you have an advantage over the other players around you, but you should always be looking for tells. For instance, you could tag a player, see a white hit marker, and realize they have less than 100 HP. Assuming you have more than 100 HP, this would be a guaranteed advantage and a good opportunity to push. Another guaranteed advantage could be having more materials than the other player. If you see two players get in a large build fight early game, whoever wins the fight probably won't have many materials left over. You should be able to push them and get height easily, or quickly take the walls of their turtle if they play defensive. Another example of a guaranteed advantage would be finding good loot off spawn like we talked about in the first section of this video. If you don't have a guaranteed advantage on another player, it's almost always best to avoid the fight if you can. It would be a risky move to push another player during mid-game out of the blue without any knowledge of how much health they have or what their loadout looks like. If somebody pushes you, you might not be able to avoid the fight, but you can still try. Obviously, if you have some form of mobility, you can use it to put some distance between you and the player attacking you. Try building cover while running away from the player to see if they stop chasing you. If that doesn't work, try boxing up and holding your walls until they leave, or another third party enters the fight to distract them. Playing defensive during fights where you don't have a guaranteed advantage is crucial to maintaining a steady stream of points. Speaking of maintaining a steady stream of points, the most reliable way to gain points quickly is to play for placement points. Oftentimes, chasing early game kills simply isn't worth it. You'll profit a lot more from matches if you wait to play aggressive until you have those initial 60 placement points secured. That's enough to cover bus fare for any players in Division 8 and under, so at the very least, you'll break even by the end of the match. Even though it might seem like a boring way to play, it is the most reliable way to gain points. Getting placement points is especially important in Trio's arena, where kills are worth 66% less points than in Solo Arena. Even if your Trio gets 6 kills in one game, you'll only walk away with 42 points, which is practically worth the same as 2 Solo Arena kills. Those 42 points don't even compare to the 60 points your Trio could get for just staying alive, which would probably be less work anyways. Like we said a few minutes ago, all you have to do is pick the right fights. It's not the worst thing to go for kills before placement points as long as you know you have a guaranteed advantage. Just keep in mind that in the long run, placement points will often get you farther than kill points. Another good reason to start playing for placement is the great late game practice you'll get. Arena matches can get intense towards the end of the round, and tournament matches can get even more intense. Having experience in hectic late game battles will prepare you if you ever decide to play in a tournament in the near future. This brings us to our next tip, securing a safe spot in the final zones. Making sure you have a safe place to build in the later zones is extremely important if you want to maximize the amount of points you get per match. Points become increasingly frequent in the end game as long as you can stay alive. The best way to keep yourself alive is to build your base in a good position. If you set up a 1x1 one one somewhere towards the center of the 3rd or 4th circle, you'll have good odds of being in the next circle as well. This will allow you to save your mobility items and means at least one less frantic rotation that could cost your life. Getting height when you box up in zone isn't bad either. If you can find a mountain or hillside close to the center zone, setting up your base there could be beneficial. If you're not able to find natural height, building your base up two or three stories could still give you the same advantages. Having height early will give you a great vantage point to pick people off far away and will reduce your chances of being targeted by other players. Having a good position in zone allows you to shoot players who are rotating from the comfort of your own box. Not only will you have a better chance of gaining placement points, you'll also have some good opportunities to pick up kill points on players rotating. When it comes to the 5th, 6th, or even later circles, the storm begins to move outside of the current zone. This will force all players to move, no matter what position they're in. Because of this, it might be a good idea to rotate early and build a new box on the edge of the circle closest to the next zone. While most other players are rotating together and running into each other, you'll be safely boxed up close to the next circle. Not only will you have more time to rotate, you'll probably have some idle time to get picks on other players who didn't box up near you. Once again, this will give you a better chance at gaining both placement points and kill points. If you have any mobility items, you'll want to use them carefully. 
Hoverboards are great for rotating quickly, but they also expose you more than any other mobility item. With hoverboards, your best shot at rotating into the zone without taking damage is to build a ramp and boost slightly upwards in the air towards the next zone. As soon as you land, get off your hoverboard, box up around it, and repeat the process when you have to rotate again. Launch pads are arguably better for rotating, but they still leave you out in the open for a long period of time. Most players who make it to endgame will be looking for long range kills, and it's rare that you'll be able to launch into the next zone without being shot mid-air at least once. If you are going to use a launch pad to rotate, try to wait until the last possible second to use it without taking storm damage. This will give you the best chance of rotating safely because most of the other players will be distracted by trying to rotate themselves. And there will be plenty of other players flying through the air, so you won't be the only target. While you're gliding, it also helps to zigzag and rapidly swap between your skydiving and gliding states to avoid gunfire. Currently, shockwaves are the safest mobility item in the game because they launch you at a higher speed than launch pads and hoverboards. It's always a good idea to make sure you're carrying at least one mobility item, whether it be a hoverboard, launch pad, or shockwaves. If you don't have any mobility, fear not, because one of the players near you might have a launch pad, and as long as you can get to it safely, you should be able to use it to rotate too. You can't argue with free rotation. Thank you guys for watching this video. You may notice my voice sounds a little different, and that's because I'm not the person you normally hear. I'm the writer behind these videos and the person who records the clips Faint XO. For the past year, I've been able to write a lot of guides for you guys that I'm proud of, but unfortunately, this is going to be my last one. I just wanted to say thanks to each and every one of you who supported us and essentially gave me a job for the past year. Since I'm leaving, this channel is going to slow way down on the guide videos, but the channel isn't shutting down, so hopefully there will be some more content you enjoy in the future. Anyways, thanks again everyone, it's been fun.